Well, that's a moment I'll never forget. The end of the multi-crew ship demo at Gamescom with the Idris doing a spectacular fly past. Now, a little later on, I'll have my picks for the highlights from the Gamescom Star Citizen presentation. But first, uh, some more Star Citizen news, because Star Citizen 1.1.6 is now available. And uh, with this new release, you will need to get the new launcher. Now, there's been a few uh, little glitches with the new launcher. Some people have downloaded it fine. But uh, I and quite a few others have had a few problems. Some may be related to Windows 10 or a combination of both. But uh, I've got mine working through uh, scouring the RSI forums. But I believe uh, just as I'm finishing editing this video, there's going to be a new launcher available. So uh, that problem may be fixed very soon. Now we've seen the Retaliator in the awesome multi-crew ship demo from Gamescom. But uh, there's now a Retaliator, well a new Retaliator, and some modules available on the RSI website. Well, the new Retaliator is actually a bare bones version uh, for $150 because it doesn't come with anything in it. However, it does come with LTI and so does the modules. Now, these modules are part of the new modular ship system. There's obviously going to be modules uh, for other ships as well. And they even promise some more modules for the Retaliator. Now, there's um, quite a few modules available and they are... A front cargo module, a rear cargo module, rear and front living quarters. Now you can get the uh, standard torpedo front and back modules. And also, in my opinion, the best module available at the moment is the dropship module. A little bit like uh, the dropship, I suppose, in Starship Troopers. Makes you wonder if we'll ever encounter some uh, nasty bugs out in the Star Citizen universe. Well, let's get back to the exciting stuff and the continent of Europe to see how CIG did on their travels. And these are the highlights of the Gamescom presentation. The man himself, Mr. Behold. Chris Roberts. It's a little bit of a surprise for you. Uh, we are going to be releasing the social module expansion this month. So this is going to come out. And for the very first release of the social module, we don't have all the uh, variation in clothes. So it'll be mostly the outfits that we have for the FPS level. But um, the next couple of releases, we're actually going to be switching where you'll be able to customize your clothes um, and do stuff. So yeah, there's you know some silly little things you can chat. You can also do uh, various emotes and goof around, dance. So here we are. Hey, and Jared, just stay with stay with Red One, please. Don't switch. So. So here we are, uh, we're in the main plaza of Area 18. Um, I think uh, if you, uh, Andrew, is any, anyone right near you? You could probably just show them the AR where they can sort of see the other, the names of the other people over them if you want to do the AR on it. So you can switch AR on, you'll be able to use Moby Glass and later Burn, so that's how you can sort of know who the various people are. These are all our various uh, uh, um, sort of demo accounts for this. And let's uh, head off to, uh, let's go to Cubby Blast. So we'll sort of do a quick tour of the different locations. So these are all sort of the basic shop types that you're going to encounter in the Persistent Universe. Um, most of them are represented here in Art Corp. They'll be obviously very different looks and styles, different brands, different shops. This is Cubby Blast, where you would come to buy your personal weapons. Um, and uh, look at a few other places. Across the way is uh, the medical unit. If you got killed in space, or you would recover in a recovery room in here and come out. This is also where you can come to buy various sort of medical healing devices. So stim packs, med packs, all the sort of things you would need if you got into 
FPS combat, uh, boarding a ship out in the persistent universe of the world. Um, and in the uh, sort of V1 of the social module, which is the next release after this one, there'll be a whole bunch of uh, AI moving around, going about their schedules. In this first release, it will just be other players and you sort of playing around with the environment. So here's the Art Corp job well. This is uh, sort of the official place that you would go to look for jobs in the persistent universe. Uh, so uh, essentially, I've talked about a mission system and a mission board. This is uh, sort of the official place for that. And again, uh, this would be full of NPCs, and you can sort of see a lot of, uh, and that's kind of the terminals you would interact with back there. And uh, big Art Corp set up behind there with a, with a constellation potentially flown by some sketchy pirates. We don't know yet. We may, we may meet them later. Go down the back alleyway, and you could, you could get mugged, perhaps. Or this is, like, here's the incinerator for the sort of Art Corp area. So potentially, you could do some shady deals back here, or they could be fairly dangerous. Or you go around here, there's sort of like a uh, kind of back door. Um, I don't know whether you want to call it a speakeasy, but it would be somewhere you would go to get um, sort of more gray missions, let's put it that way, down that way. And here is another sort of sense of a scope, a scale that we're trying to do for our planet-side environments. And I think that's, I think it's kind of a... Let's head to Astro Armada, which is where we're by a ship. But this is sort of very much about, you know, with us, yes, it's taking a bit of time, but we're, we're really trying to craft um, <laughs> there's a little aurora. Uh, we're trying, we're really sort of trying to craft the world. So they all sort of feel lived in, real places with their stories. Uh, we're doing stuff. Um, some of the conversation system stuff that we developed for Squadron 42 is going to come into the position universe, and will sort of enable us to sort of tell stories uh, in this universe and sort of. Uh, let you adventure around it in a way that maybe you hadn't before. Uh, certainly not uh, the way you had to be able to do it in Freelancer or Privateer. And so this is Dumpers Depot would be the place in Art Corp you'd come to buy ship items, which you can sort of see to the left. Andrew moves to there. There'll be all the ship items you can see out there. You'd buy them with the terminal over here, and then you can also have your ship repaired, which is sort of what's happening back there with the, the Hornet in the background, which is kind of here, I think. So we can... Bring up a camera if you have on it. Uh, so here we'll go on. I'll just pop on back to the presentation slide. So the other thing's cool is that we're going to be styling them. Uh, and these are actually all going to be fairly, uh, these are the sort of entry level ones. And just one other thing that I kind of want to know is that the throttle and the, the stick is going to be detachable. So, if you can see, you can set that up. This is the next one. So, so that, was, that would be the sort of entry level. I think, I think Cytec's going for a $149 level, the previous one. This is obviously the much higher end uh, one to compete with the very high end sort of Thrustmaster and the X65 level sticks. <coughs> All right, so we're starting. This is uh, Andrew, who's red one. And we're hanging out in our quarters, having a cup of tea or coffee. And we're going to get a message to uh, get uh, a derelict out by an asteroid field. So we're going to just head out over here. And so we're hanging out uh, at Selen Station. Uh, we're, so we're in orbit around the uh, moon of Selen there. You look over to the left here, that's the gas giant that the Selen orbits around in several of the moons. It's about 182,000 kilometers in our game space. And this whole space station is uh, set up as its own system. And so I think it's a couple of kilometers long. But let's uh, walk out and meet, uh, let's, let's put our helmet on. with red one 
uh, Jared. ships on this mission to uh, search for a derelict retaliator. Okay, Paul's going to get in his Super Hornet and uh, let's get over to the Cutlass. So the Cutlass is now set up as a multi-crew ship, which means it has its own local physics and its own zone. So we're going to load up four of us into the Cutlass. Let's go out to the front view so we could just show something, uh, turn around to the front, down. Uh, let's go to Glenn's point of view, red two, please. Get up, walk up. So now go to red one, please. Go to red one. There you are. You see Glenn in the middle there looking around. Now, we're going to start to roll. Roll this here, sir. Back to red two's point of view, please. Go back. Uh, look at Glenn. Go look so you can see the world rolling around. There you go. All right, so we're all in, moving around, moving, interacting, go back, red two back, we'll go back to the seat now. Uh, so here, this is all based uh, in large world. So the derelict is uh, three uh, million meters away, which is about 3,000 kilometers, which, are, which, which would take us about two and a half hours at the normal top speeds of arena command to fly to. That moon you see in front is actually the first moon. There's a moon further behind where the square is, and that's where we'll be going to the derelict. And as we leave the space station, we'll be leaving that zone, it'll be dumped out, and we'll stream in the new zone when we get to the new moon. We just went 3,000 kilometers on the same map in the same scale that you could fly normally to this zone, which is the asteroid field around the moon. Uh, and we're going to go towards that red flashing beacon, which is uh, the distress beacon where the retaliator um, is, uh, is out of power.
Cut to red five, Jared. Okay, back to back to retire. Now. No, keep, 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 keep track on it. There, there we go. Let's bring it out. There you go. And anyway, so that was the whole idea of the end of the scale, bringing back this uh, ship. Look up at this guy. Yeah, we're well done. There we go. So, and we can look at it from red five to. Well, that was my picks for the highlights of the uh, Star Citizen presentation. Now, as many at, at CIG return to sunny California, it leaves us to reflect on uh, the awesome promise of the future. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and wherever you're watching out in that big universe, you take care. And remember, always stay on Red One. <laughs>